Hey there, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Pastor Stu's Book Review, where today we're going to be taking a look at a book that focuses largely on youth ministry, and most specifically on teaching apologetics or the defending of the faith with youth from Generation Z. Today's book is called So the Next Generation Will Know, Preparing Young Christians for a Challenging World, and it was co-authored by Sean McDowell and J. Warner Wallace. So join me as we take a look at this book and how it impacts ministry and discipleship as a whole. Before we get into the actual review, I want to give some information about the authors so you have an idea of their background and where they're coming from as far as offering insight and their expertise into this field. Uh, to begin with, we'll look at Sean McDowell, who is the author, co-author, and or editor of more than 18 books. And he's also the son of Joshua McDowell. If you know anything about Christian authors, you'll know that Joshua McDowell has been around for a number of years, writing on apologetics as well. So a very well-informed family that Sean comes from. Sean is also the Associate Professor of Apologetics at Talbot School of Theology, Biola University, and he speaks internationally on a variety of topics related to culture, students, and apologetics. Uh, just so you know, I will link his blog below so you can take a look at that and what he has to offer and teach and some of the information that he has. As for the second author, J. Warner Wallace, he's a cold case homicide detective, speaker, and author. He's the Senior Fellow at Colson Center for Christian Worldview, an adjunct professor of apologetics at the Talbot School of Theology, Biola University as well, and a faculty member of Summit Ministries. He and his wife also write apologetic books for kids and are creators of Casemakers Academy, which I will also post a link to below in the description. Both of the authors have background in working with youth ministry or in a youth type setting, whether teaching in a school or uh, serving as a youth minister. So they do come from a background and have a good idea to offer insight into approaching this generation. As far as the premise goes, in So the Next Generation Will Know, McDowell and Wallace are aiming to encourage those who are working with the Generation Z population to prioritize those youth in an effort to better connect with and train them in ways of the Christian faith. In their preface, they write that the reason for writing this book is to show you how to teach the truth of Christianity to the next generation given the special challenges they face and their unique identity. And you can find that on page 26 in their preface. The solution that the authors suggest is that by taking a more intentional approach to apologetics or the act of defending the faith and tackling the difficult questions that many Gen Zers have, spiritual leaders stand a better chance of preparing these young men and women for the challenges that they will face in college and beyond from differing worldviews and theological beliefs. And now that we've looked at the premise, and the proposed solution, it is important for us to pay close attention to the format of the book, which we will turn to at this time. Just some basic information about the book and the format. First off, it was published by David C. Cook on May 1st of this year, so earlier in this month. It's 179 pages, plus some appendices of resources of books and curriculum and, and different things that uh, the readers can pull from if they want to do a little more research into it. The way the book is laid out, as you will see here on the screen with the chapters, is the book is primarily broken up into two different sections. The former focusing on making young people a priority through relationship building, and the latter on preparing them for the future. All the chapters focus on this idea of love, followed by an action that love accomplishes, and each chapter then focuses on a topic relating to that action. Through the use of personal experiences and stories from their ministries, McDowell and Warner then expand on their idea of what an apologetics-focused youth discipleship looks like. And that's really the approach that they take throughout the rest of the book, is to provide what apologetics looks like amongst the next generation. So as we look into moving forward with the review, I just want to offer some highlights about some things that really stood out as I was reading through the text. and. The first one that I really want to draw attention to is that the authors seem to present a very strong understanding of the necessity of striking a balance between building relationships in youth ministry as well as offering valuable information. If you've worked in youth ministry in any way, shape, or form, you know that's, that's a struggle. Uh, you have to build trust, you have to develop relationships, and it is a real challenge uh, to find that balance of you know hanging out and getting to know them as well as offering 
insight and valuable information to them that they can take with them in their everyday lives. The authors do acknowledge how tilting the scales too far one way or the other will result in a lack of understanding about God on one side and then on the other a relational void if you are not careful, which can be very difficult. The second thing that really stood out to me is that there's a lot of time that's spent on characterizing Generation Z. The way that the authors approach this is they kind of give you a little thinking exercise to write down what you would use to describe them and then the chapter lays out these different characteristics of what constitutes a person that is growing up in this generation and a lot of it focuses on the idea that while they are a group of people that can be easily written off Wallace and McDowell do a great job of reminding the readers that they are not a generation as lost and hopeless as they may appear to be a lot of people like to attribute them as just being so focused in on their technology and their social media and all of that, that it's almost impossible to reach them or to connect to them. Uh, it's not denied that they're a harder generation to reach because of their access to information and their access to just connecting with people, even though it's not real connections. Um, but they don't want anyone to enter into this idea that they're without hope and potential because there is a great hope and potential in them. The third focus that I really appreciated was looking at this concept of an apathetic generation, which is just kind of odd as I was reading through it because just a few weeks ago, I actually engaged in a conversation with some of the youth at the church where I serve that talk about this apathy and this numbness that's there. The authors mentioned how the real challenge with this upcoming generation is igniting enough of a flame to make them interested in talking about faith at all. I would imagine that any of us that are working with today's youth have experienced that and are kind of scratching their heads as to how to get into their lives and get them talking about things in order to really reach them and to focus on what's very important. Uh, this focus on passion was a much needed set of insights into dealing with the topic as a whole, so I really did appreciate that. The fourth highlight that I want to draw attention to it deals with the practicality of the book. It's highly valuable. But depending on your environment, at times it can seem unrealistic. Keeping in mind that both of these men worked in a Christian school setting, they're approaching this from the standpoint of working with youth that have no choice but to attend the classes that they were teaching. Uh, and when you're really put into that situation, and some of the stories that they share talk about these students, um, it's a very different environment than what you would find in a church setting. I'm not saying that it's impossible to apply everything in the book that they suggest, but there is going to have to be a lot of groundwork set. There's going to have to be a lot of things that are done over the course of time to develop these relationships. With that in mind, you also have to deal with the reality that when you're talking about youth pastors, it's sadly a revolving door when it comes to ministering to the youth because every probably two to three years there's a new youth pastor uh, coming in who has to really start all over with a lot of these kids. So that's just something to be aware of when what they're proposing is there. Um, I don't know how realistic it would be in a church setting, um, but they seem to suggest the idea that it is something that can be done if the groundwork is put into it. So those are just some of the highlights. There were a lot, there's a lot of other information there that's really valuable that you may get out of what they share. Um, but those are really just four things that stood out to me as I was reading it. Finally, what we want to cover is whether the goal was met as far as preparing leaders for working with the uh, youth of the gener of Generation Z. And I would say at its very core, so the next generation will know, does accomplish this goal. Uh, Sean McDowell and Jay Warner Wallace defend their point successfully, and they offer some strong insight into ways to connect more meaningfully with this generation while preparing them for an apologetic lifestyle. <clears throat> while that's all true, I don't know how successful the material is going to be for a pastor or youth worker uh, operating in a church setting, as there's very little in all reality that we can do to force kids to show up or to offer trainings that they've recommended in the book that parents are going to encourage their kids to show up to. Um, one of the biggest challenges that 
anyone faces, and it's not just youth ministry. It's just ministry as a whole is convincing people why the spiritual development should take priority over everything else. And that's just something to be aware of as you embark on reading through this material, is not to get too discouraged as you're reading through when they're presenting what is probably taking them years to figure out and that they've worked through, whereas you may be new to it and maybe just trying to figure out the best way to re to connect to kids. Um, but, you know, you work with what you've got, and I think they did a good job of providing the information as far as they've researched and know, and I think they've done a good job of setting that goal and meeting the goal of informing and giving practical steps that any leader can take to, to try it out and to apply it. As far as who I would recommend this book to, I'd recommend it to anyone uh, that spends time working with today's youth. Pastors, youth workers, and teachers in a Christian setting, I think, are going to find great value uh, in this book, especially on ways to build relationships that lead to possible discipleship opportunities. I think they talk a little bit about how, you know, one thing that they did is invite youth into just everyday activities, like, you know, going shopping, like grocery shopping and that type of thing, or if you've got an errand to run, inviting them to come along. And, you know, using... Uh, common sense in that with regards to uh, just being smart with it but if you're in that type of field and if you're really into in the youth ministry and trying to figure out what way to connect better with those kids i would definitely recommend you pick this book up and give it a read uh, i think it's a great read and it's quick too it's it's a nice quick read so before we get to the concluding thoughts it's obvious that my appearance has changed a little bit uh, just because I recorded the majority of the video yesterday and in the process of editing and getting ready, I got interrupted. So I had to re-record the end of the video, uh, which is what I've done here, um, to get it ready for posting. So that's why the appearance is different. But just to kind of close out my thoughts on so the next generation will know. Um, as I've mentioned through the review, it's a great read, something that's definitely worth picking up. And that really does it for the review this week. Um, as always, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you're a youth pastor or leader, what have you found that really helps you to connect with this generation of connected social media uh, individuals? Um, if you like the material, as always, and would like to see more of it, I definitely ask that you click that subscribe button, click that like button. and Tune in next week, where we will be taking a look at Lou Giglio's Not Forsaken, Finding Freedom as Sons and Daughters of a Perfect Father. So, until then, always remember, guys, keep the faith, and remember that you're deeply cherished. Blessings, and have a great week.